Hi guys, and welcome back to another Ibracorp video. So great to see you guys back here. Thank you for coming back and checking out the channel today. And today, as you may have guessed, we're going to be looking at Jellyfin. I know a lot of us in the community who use a lot of media servers, we use a range of different products. We use Plex, Jellyfin, Embi. There's so many different options. We've even covered DIM as well. If you haven't seen that video, uh, be sure to check that one out. It's an up and coming project as well. We won't answer everything that these other apps can do, but we're hoping Jellyfin is definitely one that you guys will enjoy. And to be perfectly honest, I'm actually surprised it's taken us this long to do a video on Jellyfin. And I don't think it was anything intentional, we just haven't got around to it. Uh, but for the next few weeks, we want to look at some media server options for you guys. And in order to be fair, we have to assess all the different options that are out there, or perhaps at least the most sought after requests and topics. And part of that is Jellyfin. Now, if you don't know, Jellyfin uh, was a fork of MB. So it was originally MB. They forked off and decided to stay open source and free. And so Jellyfin was born. I will, of course, be comparing Jellyfin to some of our other media servers like Plex to give you an idea on what you might like, what you you know won't like, things like that. It's going to be an honest review, but I'm also going to show you guys how to install it and run it. And we also have some tips and tricks that will make it run as best as possible for you. We'll be covering the installation on both Unraid and Ubuntu using Docker Compose. After that, it's all inside the app. So hopefully both of our communities, both Unraid and the Docker community, can enjoy this video as well. Let's just get stuck into it. Hi guys, and welcome back. What a week it's been. It's been very, very busy. I'll tell you what, I've actually been very addicted to Lego. I don't know if you guys are into Lego or what, but I, I tell you, I've got a problem. And uh, I've also got my wife onto it too, so we, we seem to both be addicted to Lego at the moment. So if you guys have any ideas or tips for Lego, it's my time to learn something new. Be sure to let me know in the comments. But back onto Jellyfin. So here we are on the main website for Jellyfin, and the website is jellyfin.org. Just keep in mind, guys, we are going to have a written doc that will supply you as well so that you can easily copy the Docker Compose and, you know, any other tips and tricks that we mentioned in the video today in written format. So I'll make sure I drop the link down in the description for you so you guys can follow along with our written guide. So here we are on Jellyfin, and we're on the main website. And you guys might be wondering, you know, why would I use Jellyfin? I've already got Plex. Or maybe you're, you know, you're thinking, I've already bought a Plex lifetime pass. Is it worth looking at now setting up another media server? So one of the most common questions we get is, can I run it side by side with Plex in order to evaluate it? And my answer to you would be, yes, you can. I've done it. I've done it numerous times. Some of our other admins have done it as well. There's nothing stopping you from setting up Jellyfin alongside Plex. Both will work perfectly fine. Now, what sets Jellyfin apart, of course, is that it's totally free and open source, which is always a massive plus here at Ibracorp. And I can't tell you how much it annoys me that sometimes we really rely on Plex uh, authentication. Or if you're even with MB and you're using the MB authentication part of things, you know, having to use that is a drawback because you're basically relying on a third party in order to access your content, which is not great. So what is Jellyfin? It enables you to connect, manage, and stream your media. Pretty simple, run the server on your system and gain access to the leading free software entertainment system, bells and whistles included. And here's some of those bells and whistles they're talking about. So you've got movies, TV shows, which is great. We already have that. But perhaps you don't have music. You can do music as well. You can also do live TV and DVR. A big uh, perk, or should I say a feature of Plex is being able to do DVR and live TV. You can do it in Jellyfin as well. It supports various different clients. You have a whole list of their clients here if you go to this link. But in summary, you've got you know Roku, Android, iOS, Android TV, Fire TV, all via Chromecast or Kodi. So plenty of options there for client support. We'll discuss that in a little more detail later in this video because we'll show you some tips and tricks to try and improve your compatibility and playback. Again, one of the big perks is that it's your data. There's no tracking, phone home, or central servers collecting data. If you guys are very verbose with your logs from all your communications going in and out of your house, especially if you're running like a pie hole or ad guard, you probably would have noticed the amount of pings that Plex sends back home. And it's very, very concerning. I see it all the time. It's constantly being blocked by pie hole. Um, it's really, really annoying. And 
you just don't know it's happening. Even if I've unticked don't collect anonymous data, there seems to be something that constantly wants to check back home. So that's a big plus. Of course, with us self-hosting, it's a massive plus. We don't want that going back home. We want it to be left with us. Then it's totally free. We already mentioned that. It's totally free. Doesn't cost you a single thing. Uh, it's basically run off the donations they receive. So feel free to contribute. They've got the links up here so you can help uh, contribute to them as well. There's more information about the licensing behind it. So you don't have to worry about that, but it is totally free as well. If you need to see the details, you can do that as well. You can even contribute the code. That's pretty much the intro to it. You can pretty much get started as it says, get started and get going. So with the intro out of the way, guys, let's jump into the installation. We're gonna be showing you first the Unraid installation, and then we'll go over to the Docker Compose. Once we have it installed and running, we don't have to worry about the operating system side of things. We can just focus on the app. So let's just get that done and dusted. Let's get into it. So here we are on Unraid. The first thing we're gonna do is head over to the App Store, and we'll just go over to the App Store here, and we'll type in Jellyfin. Now there's three different repositories we'll recommend for you. If you wanna try some other ones, I just can't vouch for them, I haven't tried them myself. So they might be perfectly fine, but we just haven't tested them here. So the ones we recommend is the Linux server, Hoshio, and itch777. So you've got this option here, this option here, or this option here. You can also choose the other ones, like I said as well, if you like. So for the purpose of today's video, we're gonna go with itch777's one. We'll click on that, and we'll click on install. So as you can see, there's a clear explanation of what's happening and what you need to do to get it working for your setup. So for those using the Intel hardware transcoding, here's what you need to follow. If you're using AMD, it's up here. And if you're using Nvidia, it's here as well. I think those instructions are pretty clear. We don't really need to display them separately. Since I'm using Intel GPU personally, we'll go and add that one. So as you can see, you need to install the GPU top plugin from the CA App Store. I highly recommend that if you haven't done that, Please do that. We've also covered that in our Plex tips and tricks video. Now, in the device section at the bottom of this particular template, we copy this entry. And if we look for device, which is right here, AMD or Intel device, put that directory in. Scroll back up, we'll have a read in Jellyfin, select the Intel QuickSync transcoder at playback and blah, blah, blah. Now we'll come back to this because once we get in there, I'll show you what all these mean. But for the purpose of the template, that's really all you need to do to start off with. Let's go to the network type. We'll set that to our custom Docker network, of course. And then you pick your library. So you should have your movie, TV, and music libraries. Of course, we highly recommend that you've set up your media library and folders matching trash guides. Now, if you haven't done that, we've done a video on trash guides. You can also go to trash guides website and make sure you're following that to the T because it will really improve your IO performance of your machine. It makes a big difference, guys. So you can see our libraries sit underneath the same media folder above, and then we have the cache directory. Now, if you wanted to change this, you can. You can change it from MNT user to MNT cache, and then the rest be the same. And that way it'll always stay on the cache. Um, that's personal preference. You don't have to do it that way, but definitely uh, a way you can do it. So just like that, for example. Then we have our Intel device map. So we've got that there. We also have our Intel GPU top plugin as well, so that's done. Uh, we're not using NVIDIA, so we don't need to worry about this. If you are using NVIDIA, put your UUID here, but also don't forget to add this to your extra parameters, which is up here by clicking advanced, and you've got extra parameters there. So once you're happy with all that, we've got our default port 8096, and then the HTTPS, which is 8920. Once you're done, go ahead and click apply. Okay, so with the Unraid installation done, we'll now show you the Docker Compose. So here's our Compose file. I'll quickly walk you through what's going on. We have the Jellyfin, so that's the name of a container. We've got the repository it's pulling from, so it's the official repository on this one. Feel free to use any other repositories such as Hoshio, Linux Server, whatever the case might be, that's up to you. We then have our volume, so we're mapping our app data directory and we're giving it read, write access. Same goes for MNT, that's where we're storing our media library on our true NAS setup. So that's where I've mapped it. If you have it somewhere else, obviously just change this left side to wherever that's living. And underneath that, we want the transcoding to be done in RAM to try and save on efficiency. So we've got dev shm there as well, which means in Jellyfin itself, that will read as transcode. For those who are unaware with Docker, the left side is on our host and the right side is inside the container. So when you go to start up Jellyfin, you won't be looking for opt slash Jellyfin, you'll be looking for slash config. For example, for transcode, we've, we've told it 
you know, on the host, it's located here, but inside Jellyfin, it's just called Transcode. So that's what you'd be putting inside Jellyfin itself. Underneath that, we have our traffic labels, and we also have some environment variables here as well. So make sure you change those to match what you need. Usually the PGID, PUID, and the UMask don't need to be changed, just the time zone here. We've also created our custom Docker network, which is called Proxy. It's got unless stopped, I want you to restart. And then we're mapping the dev slash dry location for our Intel transcoding. If you're using any other service for transcoding, you might have to map something else. Then at the network, we're ever just defining what proxy is, which is up here. So guys, we've done a video on Docker Compose separately. All right guys, so here we are in Termius. This is the one we covered in our live stream with some open source options. In here, we're ready to start up our Docker Compose file. So let's go ahead and do that. And my bad, I forgot to put a forward slash here. So we'll make sure we do that. Then we come back again and we'll just rerun it again. And we're just waiting for it to do its thing. And there we are, Jellyfin is up and running. So let's go check that out and see how that looks. So here we are guys, we're at the server address 8096, which is the port we defined in our compost file. It's also the port we defined in our Unraid template as well. So both our Unraid users and our Docker users should be now on the same page, literally. So let's get started. Here's what you'll first see when you first start it up, okay? It's gonna ask you to get started. We've got a quick start guide you could easily read there as well, but we don't need that. That's what Ubercorp is for. So let's click next and it's gonna ask you for some details. So let's go with username. We'll put our username, password, and another password. Click next. And now it's gonna ask us to set up our libraries. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click add library. And then under the content type, let's say movies. For the folder, we'll click the plus and we look for the path that we mapped in our Docker Compose. Now, if you know that what I did there was map MNT. If I go to MNT media, and then we go to media again, and then we go to movies. And then I've got movies and I've got movies 4K, of course. So we'll go movies for this one. That's it, click OK. Now you can also put a shared network folder if you want to and map directly to a shared network location. Library settings, so the preferred download language. I'm not sure if you really need to do this, but I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway. We'll say English and then we'll say Australia. Uh, do you want prefer embedded titles over file names? Now, if you're using your star apps correctly, radar and sonar, you should be having a very decent naming profile convention happening especially if you're following trash guides. We did that video just two weeks ago as well on perfecting your results in those apps. So be sure to check that out. Do you want real-time monitoring? If you're doing this locally, you probably want that on. Uh, disable different types of embedded subtitles. So do you want to allow different types or not allow them at all? You can do that. Automatically add to a collection. So when at least two films have the same collection name, they'll be automatically added to a collection. Now, similar to what we see in Plex, but however, in Plex, we also use Plex Meta Manager. Also, we covered in a video. So we don't really worry about that too much in Plex, but we also have the option checked. So might as well just check it here as well. Here's the two options it gives you for metadata and which one you want to be the first preference. So the movie database is currently first. Automatically refresh. Do you want it to just basically grab stuff whenever it can? By all means, why not? but it will take longer. So as you can see, it's gonna go every 30, 60 or 90 days. At the moment, I'll leave it as never, just while we're setting up. And I recommend you guys do that too, until you feel comfortable, and then you run your first scan with metadata switched on. Now in here, we have some more options for image fetching, saving artwork into the media folders. We then have chapter images and chapter extractions. So let's just go with that for now and click okay. So we've got our movies in, we'll quickly add TVs and then we'll move. So I pretty much left all the same, we'll click okay. And we have our two libraries. Now, again, if you have music, Jellyfin does support music. You've also got shows, books, photos, uh, music videos, and mixed films and programs. So nice options there for the library, which is good. Once you're happy with that, go ahead and click next. And then it's gonna ask about our metadata. So obviously pick the country or region that you like. We're gonna go with Australia, click next. Configure remote access. So do we wanna allow remote access to this server? Most definitely you will probably want that. So make sure you check that. Now, if you enable this, of course, it's gonna be choosing a random port and, and using UPnP to do so. I wouldn't recommend doing that. If you want to do it properly, make sure you know what port you're gonna be forwarding. In our case, 8096 is the port we set up. And so we can forward any external port to 8096 if we so choose. Go ahead and click next. And that's it. Jellyfin will now begin collecting information about our media. So we'll click finish and it takes us to the sign in screen. So let's go ahead and sign in now. And we're starting up for the first time. We've signed in 
and it's starting to scan our library for us. And all of a sudden you start seeing content popping up in there. But there's important settings that we need to quickly go through in order to get the best out of our server. So let's quickly go and do that. On the left hand side, if you expand the hamburger menu there, you have the admin panel down here. So users that are not admins will obviously not see this section. Go ahead to the dashboard and it's gonna give you a bit more information about what's going on. So you can see our server information here, what's happening with the library scan, recent activity. So users you know, have come online, if they've changed passwords, anything like that, which is really cool. Now, one thing that we'll go to first is plugins, okay? Because we want to set up our plugins before we go too far into our media customization. And there's a couple of plugins that we really recommend you guys use. One is the Jellyfin plugin manifest. So let's copy that, go to repositories. It's in our written docs for you guys. So all you have to do is copy and paste it. We'll click on add, we'll paste the URL, and then we obviously just give it a name. So I don't know, we can just call it, call it Jellyfin plugin man and click save. We'll add another repository as well. And this one is by uh, Cody Robiro. We'll paste that one and I'll just call it Robiro. Doesn't matter, click save. And then we have the two repositories there. So now go to the catalog and it will load plugins available from those repositories. So here's the plugins that we actually want to grab and I'll explain why as we quickly go through it. First one is fan art. So if you want some nice looking art for your uh, server, fan art is gonna be one of your best options. Now there is a, a link that you go to to get an API key to get that you know, working. So it's worth getting your own key. Go ahead and do that. Um, once you've got it, you can just go ahead and click install and that's it. Now keep in mind that once we install all these plugins, we'll have to restart Jellyfin in order for them to take effect, okay? So go through all the plugins first and then we'll restart Jellyfin. The next thing you might like is merge versions. So if we just click on that, it will allow Jellyfin to merge versions for repeated movies. So if you have different versions of the same movie, it'll put them as one item and the person just clicks on that, um, giving them the option to choose which version they want. So that's really handy, something that I wish Plex kind of did a little bit better as well. We'll go ahead and install that one. Next one we'll go for is open subtitles. Go ahead and grab open subtitles as well. Really useful. If you're using uh, the Bazaar app, you know, you may not need it, it's up to you, but this will go directly into your media server. Um, obviously your media automation tools are probably the best place to do that, but you have the option here as well, so why not? Next one is playback reporting, which gives us some really nice graphs and statistics on playback. Um, as you know, Tortulli does not support Jellyfin, so that kind of leaves us out on a statistics, which is not great, but this playback reporting plugin will do that for us. So go ahead and click install that one. We've also got reports, so very similar. We'll install that one as well, which generates some reports for you. We've got TV Maze, we'll install that one, and that will get TV metadata for us from TV Maze. Same goes for the TV DB. It's a really good metadata, that's stuff that we want, right? So we wanna make sure that that's working really well giving us you know, the right matches for our content. So really important that we set that stuff up as well. We've also got TMDB box sets. So we'll click to install that. If you're a, a fan of Tracked, also grab the Tracked plugin as well so that it can record your watched media with Tracked. And now for those who love anime, you've got two options that we recommend. You can grab the AnyDB and the AnyList. So if you wanted to, you can grab those and install them. I won't do it, but feel free to do that. So with all those plugins installed, we need to quickly restart our container and apply those changes. So if you're in Unraid, go to Docker, restart the container. If you're in Compose, restart the container as well. Okay, we've restarted the container, so our plugins should now be working. One of the plugins that we did, which was fan art, needs one additional step. Head over to your libraries, and on the library, go onto the three dots and go to manage library. If you scroll down now, you'll see some more options for metadata, which we've got here, so TVDB, and uh, you can choose what order you want them in, obviously, as well. So we'd probably move that down. So we have TVDB as our first option. Scroll down a little bit more, you've also got metadata downloaders, so we can click TV Maze, and we've also got metadata for episodes. Pick those as well. And since we've got this here, we'll go to 30 days now. And here's our image fetches. So we've got fan art here, we'll move that to the top. You can also enable the other options now too. And the same goes for the series. We'll probably move fan art to the top, may enable these ones as well. Click okay, and the same will go for movies. Now under the display for libraries, the date added behavior for new content, by default it's use file creation date. 
we'll change that to use date scanned into the library and click save. Metadata, shouldn't be too much to it. Select your language and region. And then under NFO settings, that should all be fine by default as well. Just do it however you like if you need to. Now, the other thing you can do is actually edit the image for the library itself. So if you go to edit images, for example, you can add an image to this library for basically whatever. Say, say this one, for example, we'll click upload and um, we'll close that and there you go. Even though I put that on shows, obviously it should have been on movies, but nevertheless, you get what I'm saying. So that's our library is done and you know, there's always room for improvement so you can go and tweak stuff as you go. The other thing we'd recommend probably is the transcoding. Now the final thing that's most important is transcoding. We wanna make sure that's set up correctly. Otherwise things just aren't gonna play back right. So we'll quickly head over to our transcoding settings. We've got a playback and then under here we have transcoding. So for hardware acceleration, I'm using Intel QuickSync. So we'll use that. We'll get it to go for HEVC, VC1, 264, uh, we've got VC and VP9. We want to enable hardware encoding as well. And we're now going to allow encoding in HEVC, VPP and tone mapping. This one's fine, BT2390 for tone mapping algorithm. We'll leave that as is. DSAT 0, 100, that's all fine. We keep going down. FFmpeg's fine. And then we also have our transcode path. Now, as you can see by default, it's slash config slash transcode, but that's not what we mapped it to in our config. We actually mapped it to transcode. So just change it to transcode or whatever it is in your config and then click on okay. Now for the encoding preset, that's gonna be adjustable to your liking. We'll say ultra fast to start with and then see how you go. You can always change it off. Now we're gonna disable subtitle extraction on the fly and we will enable throttle transcode. So when a transcode gets far enough ahead of the current playback position, pause the process so it will consume less resource. Go ahead and click save. On the resume menu at the top there, you've got your minimum resume percentage. So that's on five, we've got 90, five, five, and then 300 by default. All the default stuff, we haven't changed that. Change it to your liking if you like. Then we go over to streaming. And um, if you wanted to put a bitrate limit, you can do that as well. So as you can see, especially with the transcoding stuff, there's a lot more fine tuning you can do than you can in something like Plex. However, that can be very intimidating. And to be honest, if you just wanna play stuff, you just wanna be able to play it. You don't wanna to have to mess around with a lot of um, settings, but the option is quite nice. And I think overall it's pretty straightforward, especially if you're following a guide like ours, um, it should be pretty much plug and play. So I'm just gonna show you a couple of quick tips, final tips, useful tips that will help you. And then we'll show you a library, how that looks now. And then we're done guys. So under here, we now have logs. So in the log section, if you need to check your logs, you can do so straight away, just like that. You also have control over all the scheduled tasks that happen. So you can uh, change them and modify them as you wish. Something you don't usually get in other options, especially with all the plugins we installed, they also have scheduled tasks built into them as well. You can change them, for example, if you want them to be daily, weekly, on an interval, whatever the case might be, you can change that. Um, you can set the triggers yourself. Now, if you go to your users, currently we only have myself, of course, if we click on open there, and then we have our user settings, this is something that's also very, very interesting. Something you don't get a lot in other media servers is the ability to control stuff down right to the T for specific users. So do we want them to have access to certain libraries or playback? Um, we can set that here. You know, maybe we don't want them to be able to transcode. We can set that here. You can allow media deletion for users, which is not new really. You can allow downloads, disable the user, hide them from login screens. You have a whole bunch of options here that you can do. Access, parental control, and password as well. So we can enforce passwords, reset passwords, change it to pin codes, you know, all that sort of stuff as well. And being in control of the user, of course, is gonna give you the ultimate control for who's checking your content and how you can manage that. You can also edit a user's personal preferences. Now, this is probably one of the biggest pluses opposed to Plex. So if we click on this, we can actually set all the settings for them so they don't have to worry about anything. And we can also enforce their playback. So if I go back and we say playback, I can say, by default, I want you to always be automatic. Now I know for a fact that everyone out there that uses Plex, one of the most frustrating things in the world is people that don't understand what setting to put their Plex on. And that's fair enough, they may not know, but 
that's where we should have the option as the administrators to set that and force it on our users so that they're not transcoding when they shouldn't be or anything of the sort. So this gives you that option. You can set it to whatever. And you can say, I want you to be by default 1080 at 60 megabits. Um, you can also set all the other options for them as well. Uh, Google Cast versions. It's unbelievable. This is all for one user and we have control over it, okay? Um, which is really, really cool. I think it's a great feature. Worth going in and having a play and checking that out. So let's go home and have a look at our library now. We can see it started to fill some stuff out. And um, that metadata looks pretty good to be perfectly honest. And since I'm addicted to Lego, let's go to Lego Masters here and I'll show you what that looks like. Really nice UI, looks clean. Uh, we've got um, trailer option, shuffling. Uh, we can add to favorites, you know, if there's something we constantly watch. There's our seasons, cast and crew looks nice. I really like the larger designs. And then you've got recommendations of what's more like this. None of this looks like more like Lego to be honest. But anyway, once you're here, go ahead and click play. So now that's currently playing. And while that's playing, we'll go to our admin dashboard and we'll be able to see what's going on. So as you can see right here, this is a user that's currently playing something and it refreshes every so often, I believe. You can change that, I think, somewhere. And we can see what's going on. We can also go down to our plugins that we set up. So here's our playback reporting, for example. This is our playback reporting plugin. We've got our playback, you know, breakdowns of what content's being played, what kind of content, clients, uh, the usage, duration, uh, queries, and then we can change settings here as well. Now, if I just open up Bashtop on our server, we'll have a look at the resource usage. And as you can see, nothing's really happening. Obviously it's direct playing, which is great. And uh, the settings that we've used have allowed it to you know, run as best as possible. So I think that's working pretty well. You can see Jellyfin is running around here at very low percentage, even 4% memory, which is really good. So let's stop this now. And honestly, guys, I'm quite impressed. It's come a long way since I last used it. So I'm very, very impressed. And the amount that you can customize really is a selling point of Jellyfin. Um, but most importantly, it's free and open source, guys. You can support the project and try and get this to be on the same level of whatever media server you're too scared to move away from. You know, let's try and get this project up to where it needs to be really support these guys they're working really hard and it's really worth it one final thing i'm going to say is that we will show you one additional thing next week which will be jelly Sea. so we've actually had the developer of jelly Sea get in touch with us and we're going to be doing a video showing you how to use jelly Sea to get requests for your jellyfin server and um, we hope we can show you that next week and we'll also hopefully be able to show you a beta preview of an upcoming version of jelly Sea. Uh, that we've be, been able to organize exclusively with the developers. With that said, guys, that's it for today. If you like what we're doing, please think about supporting us on our website by becoming a subscriber. We really appreciate it. Alternatively, you can donate via PayPal as well. And by all means, please join our Discord so that we can be part of the discussion and get to know each other as well. We'd love to have you there. We can't wait to see you guys in the next Ibrahim video.